Hey there, and welcome to this week's edition of Clean Technica's News Broadcast. My name is Hanan, I'm your host, and this week we have five EV stories, two Tesla stories, and two sort of climate change, renewable energy-ish stories. Uh, one is about job losses, the other is about a bunch of companies petitioning Congress. You'll see. Let's get to the news. Lexus. So Toyota, they are pretty well known for shunning at electric vehicles. They consider them to be insignificant compared to the hydrogen fuel cells. However, their luxury brand Lexus is about to launch a new electric vehicle called the Lexus UX 300e. And the vehicle has pretty decent specs. It has a 54.3 kilowatt hour battery, a range of 260 miles. The acceleration from zero to 60 is a bit sluggish at 7.5 uh, seconds, but it should be, make a really good competitor for vehicles like the Hyundai Kona. And when it comes to the Hyundai Kona, while I really, really respect the vehicle, the interior didn't exactly yell the word premium or luxury at me when I was sitting in it. Something that would not be the case with a vehicle like a Lexus. Although I reserve the right to change my mind once we actually get a chance to try it out. So the vehicle was actually announced in November 2019, but today Lexus announced that the vehicle will have a 10-year, million-kilometer uh, battery warranty, and that is just unprecedented. Uh, if you take the competition, for example, the Model 3, Model Y, uh, that's either 160,000 uh, kilometers for the standard version and 192,000 for the long range or premium versions, or even the Hyundai Kona, also only eight years, uh, just like Tesla, and uh, 161,000 kilometers for the older versions of the Hyundai Kona EV, and the new 2020 version only has 200,000 kilometer warranty, and this is a lot less than what Lexus is now offering. It's a crazy new number, and unless uh, Tesla actually makes the million mile battery and actually gives that much warranty, well, until then, Lexus is on top. And basically, what does uh, this warranty entail? Basically, it means that if the charge within that period or that many kilometers drops to below 70% of what the original uh, number was, uh, you get a new battery. Uh, there is one condition you need to honor the regular service checks. But other than that, this is really impressive. Now, uh, actually, Toyota, they are, I believe, on Monday also going to be offering a... a announcing two new EVs, and the link to those uh, is in the video description down below. Ford. The Ford Mach-E, it should be one impressive vehicle when it's finally out, and today Ford talked about over-the-air update functionality. Now, the company revealed that these updates, they will be able to improve performance and provide additional new features. Uh, another interesting uh, difference between Ford's updates and Tesla's over-the-air updates is that each update is only supposed to take about 2 minutes rather than 10-15. Uh, also, if there is a long update, then the vehicle will warn its owner beforehand that this is a long update. What remains unknown is whether owners will be able to schedule uh, the software update for a different time, like for example, at night when nobody's using the vehicle. Uh, whether that is a function or not, we'll see. Uh, also, I still wonder how many components Ford will actually be able to reprogram or interconnect. I mean, what Tesla has is really advanced. They can reprogram, interconnect any part of the vehicle, and even part of that functionality would already be tremendous progress. But until we see it in action, we'll see how uh, well this works for Ford. Lucid Motors. So people are trying to make the best of the pandemic as much as possible, and this comes in different uh, shapes and forms for different companies. For Ford, uh, connecting to the previous story a little bit, um, they're actually giving Mach East uh, to employees to take home so they can continue working on the vehicles. And in the case of Lucid Motors, it apparently means putting all of their uh, beta test prototypes into storage and shooting a pretty cool video showing just how many prototypes they have and how, look they, how cool they look all together, as you're seeing in this video. Skoda. So usually when you unveil a new vehicle, you kind of take the camouflage off, and any pictures taken beforehand with camouflage on are usually considered spy shots. However, in the case of Skoda's Enyaq IV, Skoda's first vehicle to be based on parent company Volkswagen's MEB platform, and this is actually going to be a competitor to the ID4. Well, they for some reason they decided to unveil it with camouflage still on. The vehicle comes in five different configurations, so buckle up because this can get confusing. So there is the Enyaq IV50. It has a uh, 55 kilowatt hour battery, uh, of which 52 
kilowatt hours are actually usable. Uh, it's a rear wheel drive version uh, and it has a 109 kilowatt hour rear motor and a range of 340 kilometers. Then there is the Enyaq IV60. It has a 62 kilowatt hour battery, uh, 58 kilowatt hours usable, uh, and it also only has rear wheel drive motors, but more powerful ones at 132 kilowatt hours, and this uh, yields 390 kilometer range. And then there's the Enyaq IV80. It has a 82 kilowatt hour battery, uh, 77 kilowatt hours of which are usable. Again, also only rear wheel drive, but this time 150 kilowatt hour motor, and it comes with 500 kilometers of range. And then you have the Enyaq IV80X. This is the first all wheel drive version of the vehicle and both motors together put out 195 kilowatt. It has a zero to 100 kilometer hour acceleration in 6.2 seconds, a top speed of 180 kilometers per hour and a range of 460 kilometers. Uh, by the way, just so you know, all those previous versions, they did not say uh, what kind of acceleration they have, probably on purpose. And then the last one is the Enyaq IV VRS, also a all wheel drive vehicle. And this time the motors together put out 225 kilowatt. It has a zero to 100 kilometer per hour acceleration at 6.2 seconds, a top speed of 180 kilometers an hour and a range of 460 kilometers, just like the ADX. All vehicles can charge at 11 kilowatt using AC and up to 125 kilowatt using a DC fast charger. The vehicle will be released in late 2020 uh, there is no official price, but it's supposed to be around 40,000 euros. BYD. So a quick update to BYD story from last week where they announced that they're expanding to Europe and uh, Norway specifically with their new Tang model. Well, now today they're announcing that after that, the BYD cream of the crop, the upcoming Han, is coming to Europe after the Tang. And that is really exciting. While they haven't announced exactly when the vehicle will be arriving in Europe, they did announce that it will have a price between 45,000 and 55,000 euros. And now I have a question for you guys. Would it be helpful to quickly show the specs of the car each time we talk about it? Or should we not bother when this vehicle has been uh, covered before? Please let us know down below in the comments. And also before ending the story, there is something really interesting about BYD and maybe even the Han that we wanted to show you guys. Something we uh, discovered while we were looking for pictures of the vehicle. Not only does it have a screen on the inside like the Tesla Model 3, but this screen, it also flips sideways and would suddenly be just like in the SNX. This is the best of both worlds. That is just awesome. In any case, that's it for BYD. Waymo. Waymo, they just raised another $750 million. And as you might imagine, this money, it's not going to the production of a factory. No, this is all going to just keep the lights on and continue R&D. You know, I sort of remember seeing this tech by Google in 2010. I think that is when I got my first smartphone. Yeah, that's just how long Google has already been working on this. They've been working on it since Priuses looked like that and Prius was a fundamental new revolutionary thing seems like ages ago. In any case, more than 10 years later, it looks a lot better now, but still far from subtle, even with the new iPace version where it was integrated into the design rather than tagged on top after the fact. But really, 10 years later, and to be honest, the company is nowhere. It really won't get anywhere with its current strategy. You either have a universal solution or you spend the next thousand years mapping the entire earth one road at a time by going up and down the single road at least a hundred times. Now, it's either time to reinvent Waymo or abandon it. And actually, Clean Technica has yet to try out their service. Over the years, we have had two appointments with Waymo and both got canceled by them like a day or two before it was actually supposed to happen. Tesla. So the next topic is extremely controversial, so I will only cover it briefly and be as impartial as possible. Elon, he wanted to open the Fremont factory and uh, government officials on a fe federal, uh, state and city level were supportive of this, but the interim medical officer of the Alameda County where the factory is located was either unwilling to allow Tesla to open or was going too slowly for Elon's take. Elon lost his cool, he forced the issue with controversial tweets, threats of leaving California and a lawsuit against Alameda County. Another interesting thing is that Tesla published a 38 page long document in which they describe in great detail how they want to reopen the factory safely. A link can be found in the video description down below. The document comes with a couple of images and those are pretty interesting to see just how they plan to do things. The one comment that I am going to make is that with 
all of these precautions, the factory is not going to be less safe than, say, a supermarket. And since I've actually been to the Fremont factory and seen how they do things, how many people where, and how much space between them, I think that with all of these precautions, it could be, it should be sufficiently safe to work there. That is once the COVID levels have sufficiently subsided in the area. And whether that is already the case or not, you know, there is no conclusive evidence, so I'm not going to comment on that. But here is something that is a lot falls a lot more into my area of expertise, and that is batteries. Now, Tesla, they have announced a new patent for a tabless battery electrode. In the past, all of the electricity would flow right through the electrodes and then into uh, these two tabs on the top and bottom. This causes friction, which in turn causes heat. The new tabless electrode, where the entire top and the bottom of the anode and cathode's current collectors are the tab, meaning current can flow right up or down to get where it needs to go. This allows more energy to be released, it wears the battery down less, and most important of all, it makes it easier to cool the batteries, meaning that Tesla could have larger cells. And in fact, I think they will have larger cells. And you will find out more about that since I am almost ready to release an extensive video about Tesla's next generation battery. That has everything you could possibly know about Tesla's next generation battery before Tesla actually confirms it. And I hope to release it sometime next week. This is literally a culmination of multiple months of work. The renewable sector. So when it comes to the coronavirus, there is some good news and some bad news. And since I would prefer to end the episode on a high note, let's start with the bad news. Approximately 600,000 clean energy jobs have been lost. Now, this represents a 17% uh, of the overall sector. And obviously, while compared to the 33.5 million jobs that have been lost in the US um, somewhere since mid-March, uh, that's only a small part. But that's still a lot for the sector, and we still haven't hit rock bottom, which is estimated to be at 850,000. What is also important to understand is that uh, this wipes out twice as many jobs as were gained between 2017 and 2020. So really, that is a lot. Uh, what might not immediately be apparent is that 70% of these jobs don't involve installing, for example, solar panels. They uh, A lot of them involve efficient lighting, efficient heating, uh, efficient cooling systems. And since, because those kind of jobs you need to do inside the house and that is not really possible right now. Also, uh, with the current state of the economy, I'm sure a lot of people have, have put off uh, any kind of home improvement projects like this, especially the 33.5 million people who don't even have a job right now. And growth is not expected to continue until you know the economy is going to be on a more stable footing. But there is hope, as this next story will show. Green economy. Remember two weeks ago we found out that the EU wants to put being green at the center of their pandemic recovery plan? Well, this week we find out that 330 companies in the US have banded together to ask Congress to do the exact same thing. They argue that if we have to rebuild the economy, we might as well build a better, more resilient, more sustainable economy while we're at it. Here are the top 15 companies that I, as a non-American, can recognize from this list. Unilever, PG&E, PepsiCo, Nestle, Adobe, Capital One, Microsoft, eBay, Nike, Visa, Ikea, Starbucks, Ben & Jerry's, Kickstarter, Etsy. But really, there are a lot more. Here, let me quickly go through the names. Uh, feel free to pause it and take a look if you'd like. It's called the Lead on Climate 2020, and specifically, the businesses will advocate for investment in resilient infrastructure, immediate investment in the country's transition to a net zero emissions economy, and long-term solutions, including a price on carbon. The fact that so many companies and some really big ones are behind this and are arguing for this, that is just great. And so we have reached the end of this week's news broadcast. We hope you guys liked it. And if you did, please consider sharing it. Our uh, News broadcast is still relatively new, and if you send along to your friends that care about clean tech, we'd appreciate it. Also, giving this video a thumbs up will help us along. Now, everything that we talk about in this new show, we also try to write articles about, and links to those can be found in the video description down below, as well as in this little corner right here. Other than that, I wish you guys a wonderful weekend, and till next time, see ya!